Prosecutor said the charges carry a maximum of death if convicted and a mandatory minimum of 30 years. There's an identified hearing for one uh, one defendant today. Golly. But before he was in that jam, he was already, you know what I'm talking about, working. But he got in that jam mm -hmm. and he called Lil Durk about a lawyer. His girl called Lil Durk about a lawyer and Lil Durk stopped answering for him, man. And Golly. he went full fledged with it to tell them about the Quando Rondo. And Wait, to, what? And he went full. His girl called Lil Durk about a lawyer, but he got in that jam and he called Lil Durk about a lawyer. His girl called Lil Durk about a lawyer. And Lil Durk stopped answering for him, man. And he went full fledged with it. All of this it, was Durk offering crazy. a record deal to whoever took out Quando. This has to be the clearest example of sacrifices in the music industry. Here we have Little Dirk promising a lucrative record deal for the price of a body. This is Dirk requiring a blood sacrifice in order to join his record label. There is no other way to put it. He didn't even care if the person was a good artist or not. Whoever caught the body would get signed. Brit baby, he, oh, yeah. he opened up the idea that uh, Dirk had got get back to everybody already. Yeah, Sly Favon, right? Nobody. Yeah. They say you can't say that no more. See? What mention of the song? They be like, they be saying Sly Favon. I think they trolling me. Yo, by the way, that song is fire. I ain't gonna lie. Sorry, I just don't see. Alright, YouTube. Going. Today, today I'll be going over the downfall of Lord Dirk. There's a bunch of videos. There's a bunch of videos all over the internet. Bunch of videos all over the internet about Lord Dirk. We know he got caught up with the feds, man, trying to get people knocked off. I'm not about to sit here and act like I'm the news. I don't know all the information that's going on. I don't need to know. Why do I need to know? This is not really important, but it's trending right now. Chicago rapper Lil Durk is in police custody this morning. And he was allegedly oh involved God. in a murder for hire plot. Lil Durk just got hit with one of the most intense charges of his career. We're not God talking about a simple arrest here. This is about murder for hire, and it's tied directly to the murder of his close friend, King Vaughn. This isn't just another headline. It's a story oh of revenge, God. loyalty, and an alleged plot that reaches from Chicago to Los Angeles. Let's break down the details of how Durk's past might have finally caught up with him and what this could mean for his future. The other day, Lil Durk was arrested God in Florida Dirk. on charges linked to a murder for hire plot, a serious accusation that's bringing a whole new level of attention to his life and career. According to federal prosecutors, Prosecutors Dirk and five others tied to his Only the Family, OTF Collective, were part of a plan to take revenge against Quando Rondo's camp for the murder Golly. of Ken Vaughn, Dirk's close friend and collaborator, back in November 2020. Authorities alleged that this entire plot began when members of OTF wanted to seek retaliation for Vaughn's death. The story of revenge didn't just stay in Chicago, though. Prosecutors claimed that in August 2022, members from Lil Dirk's crew traveled to Los Angeles on the behalf of Dirk himself, and they had one goal in mind, to go to LA and take out Quando Rondo. Bruh, they, like, this is dumb. I'll be mad. Like, obviously, you got to spin about your bro because he died from the ops or whatever. But I'll be so mad because it's like, damn, bro, we spinning behind you and you went and left your security and everything and died. And now I got to, like, we got to stand on that. And if I don't stand on that, I look dumb. Like, bro, this is... However... This act of violence instead led to the death of Quando Rondo's cousin, Lo Pab, as the group allegedly carried out what they saw as retribution for Vaughn's murder. On August 19, 2022, Quando Rondo and- I, I remember when that first happened, the whole Quando Rondo thing, when his uh, mans had died, people didn't even know that it was linked to Lil Dirt at all. People still was like, he, he ain't get get back. So like, this, the streets, Streets of social media is just a mess. And his cousin Lopab went to Los Angeles, making their way through the city, reportedly attending some business related matters and spending time with close associates. Quando, known for his connections and tense history with Lil Dark's camp due to the tragic conflict that surrounded King Von's death, was cautious yet calm as they navigated through the city that day. By the time the sun started setting, they pulled into a gas station near the Beverly Center, just a quick stop to refuel before moving on. Unbeknownst to them, another vehicle had been tracking their movements, strategically following them through Los Angeles. By the time Quando and Lopab pulled into the gas station, the second vehicle was closing in and everything was set for the ambush as they parked that white sedan that had been following them pulled in close creeping up just enough for its passengers to get a clear line of sight and in an instant the calmness of that sunny afternoon was shattered
Right now, the search is on for three people who police say shot at a Savannah rapper, killing a member of his entourage. It happened in Los Angeles, and cameras this is crazy. captured the aftermath. As shots rang out and chaos erupted, the black SUV became the center of a tragic, gut-wrenching scene. The air was filled with panic, and within moments, it was clear the ambush had left someone critically hurt. Quando Rondo's oh cousin, Lil Pab, was hit. But the full weight of what had just happened didn't hit Quando until later on. Caught on camera, the haunting audio of Quando's screams went viral in the hours that followed. Like, that's so messed up. Like, imagine you genuinely freaking out because your, your, your cousin died. And it's like people on the internet remaking this laughing at you about it like this is such a weird time his voice is connecting Lil Pab's death to an alleged murder for hire plot involving Lil Durk's OTF crew. This tragic story has taken on even darker layers. According to prosecutors, Lil Durk is the man behind what they're calling oh, a wow. calculated murder for hire plot, allegedly orchestrated as revenge for the death of his close friend, King Vaughn. They claim that Lil Durk, along with several members of his OTF collective, conspired to take down Quando Rondo or someone close to him as payback for Vaughn's tragic loss in 2020. This isn't just a simple feud, they're painting it as an organized deliberate plan fueled by loyalty, revenge, and a desire to avenge Vaughn's legacy. Prosecutors allege that Dirk's crew wasn't just acting out of anger. They were reportedly promised rewards for their loyalty. The indictment describes coded conversations between the alleged conspirators, detailing promises of financial compensation for opportunities in the music industry under OTF. This, no. they say, gave the men enough motivation to track down Quando's circle in Los Angeles. So, so... They were going to be able to kill them, get money, and it was going to help them as as an artist. That's so stupid, though. So the fact that you killed somebody, now you about to be a popular artist. Like it was going to help them get a career by catching a body, and now you you basically got to be low to dirt forever because it's like he know that you you got it in blood, basically. That's how you got your deal. You got your deal in blood. You took. You took you took a body. Now you a poppin' rapper. Diamond <clears throat> mentions coded language oh used to communicate God. these promises, hinting at payouts and increased status for anyone who carried out the attack successfully. Prosecutors argue this incentivized Dark's crew to go to extreme lengths, planning and executing an ambush with the expectation that their loyalty <clears throat> would eventually pay off. The prosecution alleges that the attack wasn't spontaneous. It was a result of deliberate planning. Members of OTF are accused of traveling from deliberate planning they were really stalking and calling different gangs to see who and who the streets is dumb because it's easy to to get people touched because they all know each other and the illuminati i just noticed the illuminati be whacking each other because they all know each other so it's like they isolated themselves from everybody else so it's like you gotta wash your back from your old people and it's like damn what the fuck like my old people could get just get me going because it's like they know so much about me or <clears throat> but that's what the streets is is like people you're doing stuff with people that know so much stuff about you and that's why you stay around them because they know what you did and that's you're tired of them like that's what make you your bro like y'all both stole a car y'all both killed somebody and now y'all both keeping the silent and y'all bros and y'all tied in with it and it's just like that's y'all thing that's the streets, literally. From Chicago to Los Angeles with a mission, which was following Quando Rondo's movements and waiting for the right moment to strike. The hit itself, they claim, was executed in a way that aligns with a classic murder for hire operation, with members tracking Rondo's SUV, waiting for him and his crew to be in a vulnerable position before launching the attack. Court documents reveal that after the incident, the OTF members stopped <coughs> at an In-N-Out where they discussed payments with one of the top OTF associates before heading back to San Diego to catch flights back home. Records show that there was a payment exchange that happened as a reward for the murder. Now the most important part in all this is that they're saying that Lil Durk is the mastermind behind everything. He was the one who provided funds for flights, ensuring his associates could travel from Chicago to Los Angeles. Jeez, and according Dirk. to court documents, Durk allegedly arranged for OTF members it's GG's. You want to know why it's GG's? Because Dirk actually raps about this stuff. So it's, it's not even a fact that you can use lyrics. You, I feel like with an artist like Little Dirk, you, you shouldn't not be able to use his lyrics. Like, he's really doing this shit. Like, it's real. So they were operating based on what he told them to and, do. As and he basically be snitching on himself in his lyrics. So if you can't use his lyrics, like, 
they must got raw. Well, they, they probably got raw evidence. They, they got his ass. He was trying to escape to Puerto Rico and shit. The head honcho. Dirk's top associate, Kayon Grant, reportedly coordinated logistics on the ground, but Dirk is said to have provided the financial resources and guidance needed for the ambush. Kayon Grant arranged hotel accommodations, bought ski masks to Because he, he raps, he literally raps about it in his music. Like, documents indicate that Grant was also the one who supplied fire. He knows that, like, the choice he makes and what comes with it, so he'll rap the idea of if I did get caught, this is what would happen. I think you probably at this point understand why this is so bad for Dirk. These aren't just accusations of association or indirect involvement. Prosecutors are painting him as the mastermind behind a deadly, premeditated act. He's being being accused of financially and logistically supporting a murder for hire scheme that targeted a rival going as far as to cover travel costs, conceal identities, and provide weapons for the attack. This is some serious stuff right here. And if the court accepts this narrative, it elevates his role in the case to the one who's going to carry the full responsibility for organizing a violent conspiracy with potential penalties, including life in prison oh or even God. death penalty, if the court finds sufficient evidence of intent. Moreover, the case is built around digital communications. Damn, bro, if he died, like, bro, if he gets the death penalty, bro, this rap shit is going to be dead. But, like, like, testifying to strengthen their what's, even more if any of the what's going to win in the end is just raw creativity like real artistry like the people the people who really should be in front and center are going to just be in front and center so it just doesn't make that's all that's happening like it's like a like the world's changing like the world's about to the, not about to the world's changing like the stuff that is a it's changing like a lot of the bad stuff is is getting uh, erased for real. Co-conspirators cooperate with authorities. It could seal. The like this is crazy. P, P Diddy had a lot of, of a connection to our culture. It, it's so weird, but that's such a significant uh person and to a lot of the people who we assume as an artist or assume as gangster or assume are rappers and shit. Like he he play in the hand of social media comedians and shit. So it's like. Like, that one person. So it's just like, what the fuck? Like, things are changing. We only going to see years from now that, like, damn, the industry, the music is different. Like, people are going to be different. Like, the, the desire is just going to be different. The landscape is different. It's different. It's growing. It's changing. It's good. That's good. This is what we need. This is what we need, for real. Like, this is... It, like this is most certainly what we need for sure. The case to Dwight, Illinois. Dirk Banks, or Lil Dirk, was honored and celebrated last week with keys to the villages of Bellwood and Broadview. Oh, he got his keys so to the city taken away. To Broadview, we are honored to present this key to the city to Dirk Banks' neighborhood heroes. Ever since I was a kid. He got it taken away. away. Yo, the they might really, the like, it might really be GG's for him. Like, it might not even be no, like, he escaped or, like, if, if it's GG's for Dirk, bro, like, this is just gonna, it's just gonna change something. Like, especially if they give him the death penalty, bro, that's gonna change people because all these people that you perceive are tough and gangster, they're just, they're just living off of, like, trying to be this thing one day. And this, and, and these are the people who painted the ideas, for real. Like, Pennsylvania and those weird landscapes that be beefing and hoods. They be literally trying to recreate Chicago in Pennsylvania. Like, that's not even genuine if you have to recreate. Like, if you got to have a gang that's in California and, and just make it up in your state, like, why can't it just be that state gang? Like, that's just fake. That's fake. Like, you listening to this song and now your whole hood is a crip. It, that don't make sense. It's fake. All of this shit is fake. It's fake. If it's not the original people, it's fake. It's just add-ons. It's fake. Anybody could be it. It's fake. Well, when you get accused of of certain things they just automatically revoke stuff even if it's not true 
but this is such a serious allegation. It's like, why the fuck are you being accused of this? And we know that you rap about this, so it's like, why are we about to sit and act like you don't? Why did we give him the key to the city in the first place? What the fuck are we doing? <laughs> like, come their way. Dirk's public shift to a more positive, community-focused persona, receiving the key to the city. Come their way. Dirk's public shift to a more positive, community-focused persona, receiving the key to the city, doing charity work, and his spiritual growth all adds layers to his defense. If anything would happen like in his case. It sends a message that he's moving away from his past, showing the authorities that he's more serious about changing and leaving his past behind. And maybe for Lil Durk, it wasn't so much about completely avoiding any legal troubles, but maybe he did all this as a way to soften the blow. If they Hey, this could be a strategic thing because a lot of, hey, I'm from Baltimore City. A lot of uh, niggas was being a Muslim to be in a gang or have a group of people at, at, at one point when I was growing up, even the younger people. And it's like, you know, people do it. Um, but the Muslim men do be speaking to a lot of people that's in the streets. And it's easy to be inspired and get converted too. Because I, I could have got converted to a, a, a Muslim and all that stuff because my mentor is Muslim and he took me to the mosque and I'd be around all the men and stuff. And they... Uh, it's good for the mind. It's good for the spirit. You feel safe. You feel protected. And that's basically what everybody in the streets, that's what they want to do. That They, they want to be in a group. They want to be with a group of people. So it's like when you with the Muslim men, you all in groups, you all doing positive stuff and different stuff in the community actually have recordings or solid evidence of Dirk orchestrating a murder, the defense options are limited. When it comes to cases involving <coughs> premeditated murder, especially with the added weight of conspiracy or organized crime, the sentencing gets really serious. People facing charges like this typically don't get lenient treatment. The legal system often comes down hard, and with someone of his profile, authorities will likely pursue the maximum, just to make an example out of him. Dirk might be looking at significant time unless his legal team finds a way they to trying to make an example out of him or challenges the credibility of any witnesses against him. And in high profile cases like this, even if they don't have direct evidence, the cumulative weight of circumstantial and digital proof can still lead to heavy consequences. Brit baby, he oh, yeah. he opened up the idea that uh, Dirk had got get back to everybody already. Yeah, Sloth of honor. Nobody... Yeah. They say you can't say that no more. See? What mention of the song, they be like, they be saying Sly for Vaughn, I think they trolling me. Yo, by the way, them songs is fire, I ain't gonna lie. It's not reason, I just don't see them comments no more. Why? Oh, yeah, because of... Wait, no, wait, no, no, like, they who died? Say you can't say that no more. Oh, because of FBG Cash? Oh, who? Nah, because Lil' Pop. Oh! Ah, uh, damn! Wait, <laughs> yo, he he snitched hard as fuck. This nigga snitched like a a a a a regular person. Like he didn't even have to say anything. All of this Wait, was Dirk offering crazy. a record deal to whoever took out Quando. This has to be the clearest example of sacrifices in the music industry. Here we have Little Dirk promising a lucrative record deal for the price of a body. This is Dirk requiring a blood sacrifice in order to join his record label. There is no other way to put it. He didn't even care if the person was a good artist or not. Whoever caught the body would get signed. This is similar to what just happened in the Young Dolph situation. One of the men who were hired to take out Young Dolph by Big Juke was promised a lucrative record deal with CMG for the body. If this doesn't yeah. prove how evil the music industry is, what does? Here we have rappers getting caught requiring a blood sacrifice for a deal. After all the years and all the bodies that have been piling up around Dirk, he's finally facing the consequences of his ways. For the first time ever, it's not someone around him, he's taking the fall. All of this is happening because of Little Dirk. No one else is responsible. He decided to promote death and evil through his music to enrich himself. He didn't care about disrespecting the dead or inciting violence. All he cared about was how much money he was making. After so many of his friends and family members passed away, Dirk never changed. 
he used everyone around him to make himself more money. I honestly mm. don't think Dirk cared about King Vaughn the way people think. It's obvious, he only saw him as an opportunity to make more money. Believe mm. it or not, Dirk used Vaughn's death to make himself richer. Dirk and Vaughn weren't close friends before the deal, they were simply acquaintances. If Dirk actually cared about Vaughn, he wouldn't have let him continue on the path he was on. Instead, he monetized it and made millions off his persona. Dirk encouraged it because he knew it would sell more records. He used Vaughn to push himself to the top. When Vaughn passed away, Dirk only got bigger and bigger. And in my opinion, I think Vaughn's death only benefited little Dirk. He not only capitalized off his death, but he also cleared his criminal charges because of his death. Remember, little Dirk and King Vaughn were both facing some serious charges. They were facing charges over robbing a man in Atlanta. While Dirk and Vaughn were initially both charged, after Vaughn passed away, the charges were dropped from Dirk and only Vaughn was seen as the man responsible. Even though Dirk was caught on camera unloading his weapon at the victim, Vaughn passing away was the best thing that can happen to little Dirk. I don't get that, bro. Like, you gonna give murderers and shit keys to the city. Like, why would you give Meek Mill the key to the city? I, I understand that he came from nothing and everything, but he literally, that's all Meek Mill talks about was, like, sliding and shit. <laughs> Thank you. But, like, literally, like, Meek Mill got the key to his, his city, too. Like, now he's trying to stand for oppressors and against the jails and shit, supposedly. But it's like... The same people that we want to look up to, they do be the ones telling us to do the dumbest shit and advertise the dumbest shit. Love them grad. Do y'all homework. Then you got this OTF jam. Jam is up. Like, let this up. Free the real on my baby. It, it hit different on four now. I'm all at the at the concert. Dirk just brought me out on stage trying to say the kids push the piece on for them grade. We was on some new shit. On for them grade, you got a who you done fed on for them grade is bogus, for I don't care where y'all from on for them grade. I don't care what size y'all from for this shit bogus on for them grade. Real feelings is different. Man, you feed him for, for 12 years. He come home with a, a wire. A wire. A wire is crazy, bro. A wire. Do y'all homework on me bringing my mama. So the feds was watching my mama too. It hit different. I'm, am I in some shit? Like, let's just strike there. Like, I mean, we got a little link card for I, I, I just be real. I'm phoning them. Oh, Lil Dirk was grabbed yesterday, last night, man. He was grabbed in Florida, and he was held by the U.S. Marshals, the feds, and they took him to federal court this morning. And they saying that Lil Dirk is a mastermind. He a mastermind. According to the federal paperwork, Lil Dirk um, told Didi that he got money, whatever, for... Um, Quando Rondo to be killed. So this hit was for Quando Rondo and not his friend Lil Pap. It was for Rondo to be killed. And they end up killing Lil Pap though. And Lil Dirk, they got multiple phone calls with Lil Dirk. Even Lil Dirk saying, telling Didi not to um, put the flights or none of that connect to nobody name connected to him. Nothing connected to him. So that's like, don't use the OTF cards, bro. Use something else. Try to get something else. DD swipe um the, the OTF card to pay for the flights. Um and Dirk told him, uh, dude Dirk told him, and this is in the federal paperwork. Y'all can go and y'all can go and see it for y'all self. Um Lil Dirk, he didn't even I, I'm gonna tell y'all, we I'm gonna talk about Jam for a little bit. Lil Dirk didn't even know Jam. Lil Dirk opened Jam, open arms because around Chicago through the BD neighborhood, Jam is a killer. Jam had been to the joint and actually Jam whooped. A person who was disrespecting Nooski, he had beat him, overbeat him with a weight on the yard in Centralia. And that's how Lil Dirk, you know, they got back to Lil Dirk that Jam did this shit for his cousin. And when he got home, Lil Dirk, you know, opened them with arms. But any real members know that Lil Dirk don't know him. He ain't no childhood friend of Lil Dirk. He's from over east, man. And they open arms because around Chicago, Lil Dirk. He didn't even, I, I'm going to tell y'all, I'm going to talk about Jam for a little bit. Lil Dirk didn't even know Jam. Lil Dirk opened Jam, open arms, because around Chicago, through the BD neighborhood, Jam is a killer. Jam had been to the joint, and actually Jam whooped a person who was disrespecting Nooski. He had beat him, overbeat him with a weight on the yard in Centralia. And that's how Lil Dirk, you know, they got back to Lil Dirk that Jam did this shit for his cousin. 
And when he got home, Lil Durk, you know, opened them with arms. But any real members know that Lil Durk don't know him. He ain't no childhood friend of Lil Durk. He's from over east, man. He He's from over east. He's from 79th and Vernon, where Big Law them from, where they originally from. But Freckle Face beating them. They, but they Lamron too, though. They Lamron. Lamron, MTV. If you know, you know. Well, Jam was in that jam. But before he was in that jam, he was already, you know what I'm talking about, working. But he got in that jam, and he called Lil Durk about a lawyer. His girl called Lil Durk about a lawyer, and Lil Durk stopped answering for him, man. And he went full-fledged with it to tell them about the Quando Rondo. And Wait, to, what? And he went full. His girl called Lil Durk about a lawyer, but he got in that jam, and he called Lil Durk about a lawyer. His girl called Lil Durk about a lawyer, and Lil Durk stopped answering for him, man. And he went full fledged with it to tell them about the Quando Rondo. And to Cash Killers, man, you you on borrowed time, man. You better run, man. I'm telling y'all. Hey, this is not, this is just an indictment. The Rico coming, though. The Rico coming. They didn't, they didn't commit crimes against uh cross state lines. Um, Lil Dirk Lim with his name been involved in a lot of shit and he escaped. But remember, all those charges were state. The those charges were state. When they drop a case. That don't mean they can't pick it up, and the feds can pick it up. The feds got um, more time to pick up any case than the state then. So Lil Dirk is the mastermind behind um, Quando Rondo shooting with his friend being killed. This in the federal paperwork. Um, he was texting them, um, um, aiding them, and everything. Even though the other people played their role in it and picking it up for the airport, they even swiped the card with OTF to use to fly a jet. A guy flew, flew a private jet to the airport, um, to California, and then got up out of there on a private jet back to Atlanta after the hit was done with OTF credit cards, man. So that's conspiracy alone. And then they saying that Lil Durk ordered it, man. He ordered a hit. Now, Lil Durk was too big, bro. He was too big, and he ain't see it, bro. That That's because he wasn't, he didn't um, come in, come up with the people who he came in with. He wasn't never hanging with Tay Town, bro. Dirk wasn't never hanging over there. Dirk was hanging with Vernie them. He was hanging with Lil Reese them on Lamron. He was hanging with Lamron, bro. He was Lamron three hundred, bro. And then you know he was hanging with six hundred. But as they kept, as they was going down, crashing out behind wards and shit, he was moving on to the next block. Lamron probably called them out if they called them out about some. You know what I'm saying? And Lil Dirk, he went over there with the threat in them. Now the threat, supposed to be Lil Dirk friend and you a millionaire. Why do you need Dirk assistance to help with a fucking murder? Like if you a real gangster, bro, you don't even need to talk to Dirk. All Dirk got to do is tell your ass, hey, I need something gone. And you supposed to know what to do. Man, they texting Dirk like they amateurs, bro. You know what I'm saying? Hey, this ain't no bloggers fault. This ain't nobody fault, bro. This Lil Dirk fault, bro. He was up and he was hanging with some two lot of niggas, man. That's all I can say to y'all. Hey, for OTF Jam, he a killer, bro. Like, he ain't, he ain't no goofy, uh, none of that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, if he run to one of them, he gonna overbeat them on that thing. He a bruh, bruh, a grown bruh, bruh. A bruh, bruh before a bruh, bruh. Like that. Some shit like that. But OTF Jam did um go all in on Dirk, man. He threw in the cards, man. Went all in on them. And, you know, this how we come to today. And um, Cash, FBG Cash Case. It will be solved, man. This first-hand information, you know what I'm talking about? FBG cash case will be solved, man. It will be solved. So the killers, y'all on borrowed time. But Lil Dirk has been arrested for the murder of Quando Rondo. He went to court Golly. this morning, and now they waiting on him to extradite him back to California and with the rest of them. You know, you got to go in front of a judge within a certain amount of time. So they had to take him to a Florida um, federal um, judge, and then so he can hear his charges. Only thing the federal judge is gonna do is read him his rights, tell him what he arrested for, and the crimes that he arrested for, and the penalty. And then they're gonna tell him that he'll be seeing a judge in California. Now, with Brick Baby, Brick Baby bogus as hell, y'all. Brick Baby bogus, bro. Like, he bogus as hell. To all the gang members in California, he been on that bitch just dry snitching and everything. And I think it was a play. I think, look, I think Brick Baby really involved. If he be right in your room. Watching your grandma always told me, your friends is your best enemy, 100. For the youth that think it's cool to slide with your partners, let this be an example that the streets are watered down. People will lie on you to get their stuff out of a gym. 
I'm living proof. Y'all favorite gangster lied on me for a body. Can't nobody tell me how to feel if I'm a victim of a rat. And um, this post, they pointing at OTF Jim. You know what I'm saying? This Bay Zoo. Bay Zoo is confirming that OTF Jim is a snitch. You know what I'm saying? It's quite obvious at this point now, bro. Like, we was looking early on the live. We had said, like, nobody from OTF really confirmed it. Why well, they ain't speaking on it? But look, man, THF Bay Zoo has confirmed. He said social media, fake fans, bloggers, etc. Know how to give. The only bad I really Please. saw in the music industry was in the Pussycat Dolls. Getting calls about what you ate that day. Who? Uh, you know, unproven titles. So people, murder for hire is outrageous. Paying a picture for the officials to run with trick you out your position, shaking my head. For the record, why would you have to pay his day ones to hunt for a loss of another day one? Make it make sense. But that ain't, you know what I'm saying, the crazy part. This the crazy part, that he posted this, and then he got is pointing at OTF Jim. So it's official, gang. THF Bay Zoo officially confirms that Jam is a rat. And I'm going to go with Bay Zoo. Bay Zoo been around for years. You know what I'm saying? Got a lot of respect. You know, he one of those members, one of them solid guys. You feel me? One of them guys who stay out the way. They even, like, shit, it took him years to even do an interview. So you know he ain't clout chasing. You know what I mean? But, um, yeah, it's crazy, though. Them same guys be the ones that be hiding it, hiding and pretending like they cool with you, but they envy you. You know what I'm saying? Somebody come home, you set them up with a crib, a car, and $50,000 plus, in a way to even make some more money, like you being a fake-ass rapper. That nigga Jim couldn't rap, man. Let's keep it a buck. Can Jim <laughs> rap? Hell no, bro. But OTF behind him, that stamp behind him, Dirk saying his name on verses, that alone can get him a long way, bro. To even get, let's like, just say, 5000 a show. You know what I'm saying? He can perform that song every night with Lil Durk and get a, a little cool 5000 You know? But, shit, man. These people, they want what you got. They don't want just the, the smaller things in life, the things that they can't even provide for their damn self, clearly. But they want what you got. Got you know it. what I'm saying? Like me, I like my play full. You know, I like a little steak, maybe some pasta, some rice, mm -hmm. some vegetables. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Don't forget, like, shit. I fuck around with some potatoes, you know? Give me some lobster tails. Give me some shrimps, right? But if I provide a play for you, and I put a baked potato on there, a nice steak on that motherfucker, and some shrimp on there. That ain't enough for you because you like, damn, I ain't get a lobster tail. Come on, gang. But the streets been dead. The streets been watered down, like Bezu said. That shit over with. You know, it's too many cameras. It's too many rats, you know. The longevity in the streets ain't even a, a good 10-year run no more, let alone five years, you know. Yeah. It's more like... Shit, you might be tricked out your position within 18 months, 12 months. You know what I'm saying? You facing ch charges like the the like if you do the math, how long was you on the streets getting that type of money versus how much time you're about to spend? This shit is way different from back in the day, gang. And I'm talking about back in the day. I'm talking about my pops era. Okay, you you have a run, five year run, make money, put it up. You know what I'm saying? Provide for the family, get a couple of cribs. You know, go sit down for like 10, 15 years, come home. Nah, bruh. Um, they said that this man was wearing a wire for years, right? Mm. OTF Jam, and this how crazy this how crazy it is. This man did twelve years in jail 
came home, wore wire, and took down one of the biggest, if not the biggest, groups out of Chicago uh, operating right now. Mm. Right? Whether you want to call them a criminal enterprise, whether, no matter what you want to call them, O Block OTF is one of the biggest organizations operating out of Chicago right now. Now, here's the thing. This is what they're not saying. I wonder who put him up to it. Uh, right? They say he caught a gun charge, and after he caught a gun charge, that's when he agreed to wear the wire and take down guys in, um, affiliated with OTF. And that's messed up, man, because it's sad how guys be in the street doing X, Y, and Z, whatever they're doing, and they can't hold water. Right? He already did 12 years. I guess as soon as he caught the gun charge, he felt that it was over, but he volunteered himself and said, look, for information based on Little Dirk or OTF or whoever, I will wear a wire and bring these guys down, right? And substitute for less time or no time in jail. And this is what we're looking at. Now, I bring that up because when you think about it, if he was wearing a wire for years, right? Put this in retrospect. He was wearing a wire for years. Hmm. Forget the little pad situation. Just imagine everything else ever since i was a kid i've been in the middle the middle is all i've ever known but with a blocked middle seat that they know yeah, right? let me say that again he wore a wiretap for years so think about everything that this man know and got recorded right Y'all seen what FBG Cash lost his life. We seen the trolling going on. We seen the, we seen a whole lot. And I think, to be honest with you, in the coming days or the coming months or weeks or whenever, in the near future, we're going to be seeing a lot of stuff come to light. This is and or their family members have already received threats and or have been contacted in what appear to be attempts to influence their participation in this investigation. Sheesh. So I'm assuming. So, see, somebody's talking. <laughs> Once again, somebody's talking. Either they got him on wiretaps doing it, or one of the family members or friends or somebody's coming forward and saying, look, this man is threatening us, telling us that we shouldn't cooperate in this investigation that's going on. And we fear for our life, or we, whatever it is. But somebody is coming forward talking, or they got them on wiretaps doing it personally. The prosecutor said the charges carry a maximum of death if convicted and a mandatory minimum of 30 years. There's an identified hearing for one, uh, one defendant today. Golly. They would say, quote, Durkio attempted to trick the feds when he found out his, cr his crimes got arrested. Dirk booked three different flights to Italy, Dubai, and Switzerland. The only issue is the feds had wires and taps on them. They have Dirk making threats to kill others who may testify against him. In other words, it's a wrap. Sheesh. So not only have they charged him for the murder for hire plot, but they also, ha they also have him on wiretaps making threats and telling people not to in, um, involve themselves in this investigation say bruh this whole this whole situation is insane streets are dead we know this because it's factual okay what more do you need from my what more? nah but um thanks for watching this video like and subscribe you know